Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Dr. Shannon Valenzuela. We'll see a video from her upcoming miniseries and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight our guest is Dr. Shannon Valenzuela. She is a professor of literature at the University of Dallas. She's written and directed a new series called The Quest that EWTN is going to air and we're going to talk about that miniseries tonight. We need courage in this life to carry on, you know, to do the will of the Father, to build up the kingdom of God. And that's a big theme for this miniseries. That's a big theme in this so. quest. So <laughs> we're now going to a video from our new miniseries, Quest. What can I do that is the definite service that God wants me to give to the world? When you think of the, the challenges that we have coming from our culture, we really need the virtue of courage. Are you ready to put yourself into the hazard? Are you ready to say yes to the call? Are you ready to be a witness to love? Dr. Shannon Valenzuela, welcome to Life on the Rock. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for having me. EWTN is going to air a, a, a five-part series that you produced, you wrote and directed uh, there at the University of Dallas and uh, called The Quest. Can you give us a thumbnail sketch of this series? Absolutely, I'd love to. So The Quest is, as you said, it's a five-part uh, mini-series and it basically tells the story of the process that we come to discover our purpose in this life and living it with courage. Um, and it draws on many stories from scripture and from history, from stories from literature, uh, stories that we might be familiar with and love very dearly um, to help us to understand how a life that's lived in witness to the truth is really possible, um, no matter how much we might be afraid or you know how many obstacles we fear are in the way. So it's it's meant to be a story of hope um, and encouragement. We hope. Uh, right, and those are some of the big themes on the different episodes of conscience, of courage, having confidence in God and witness, and you know the darkness, hope themes. Um, and it, you are a professor of literature at the University of Dallas, and. You really, I think it just feels like you drew upon your study of literature to make this a narrative and a story and it's high production values. You have a lot of great B-roll scenes from the world, nature and everything. To It's really beautifully shot that draws Thank us you. in. But tell us maybe about the narrative form of it a little bit. What were your goals there? So our goal was really to present the the story of the human life, I guess, as a narrative arc, um, exactly as you say. So um, we understand that our life has a beginning and we have uh, a middle of our life where so many different things happen. We go in so many different directions. We make so many choices about where we're going. And all of that is leading us towards our end um, and towards the end of our life and towards what lies beyond that. And so the goal of the series really was to show that narrative arc of, of the human experience and kind of walk us through what is it like to hear the voice of God. So we begin with hearing the voice of God calling us to some great work in the world, um, whatever it is that he has designed us to do, uh, the purpose he has called us to do in this life. And then kind of walking us through the stages, right? Stepping out on the path with courage in the appointed task, the courage to bear witness even when things get really difficult and the courage to continue to move forward even when it feels like we are alone, um, going through what, what's commonly called like that, that feeling of the dark night of the soul. And then finally, that final um, way of hope, as we call it, the journey that takes us finally home again. And so we, we tried to portray kind of all of those different experiences, I guess, of, of the human life um, as we explore this theme of, of courage and purpose. Right. And so that, you would say that's the, a predominant theme then of the, the miniseries, yeah. And I like that because that is Jesus's most common command in the gospels is to have courage. 
Certainly mm -hmm. Mother Angelica talked a lot about courage. She would tell us, the, my community, she'd say, have guts, she would say, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's and, lovely. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I think, you know, in, in modernity and moral relativism, you know, we could say that, you know, there's nothing worth, there's no kind of truth that we have to live by, that we have to sacrifice for, because it's just your own personal truth, whatever you decide, there's no objective truth, that that strips out that drama, and that strips out a need for courage. But the mm -hmm. Catholic Church has a lot to say about courage, <laughs> the scriptures yes. do. So, I mean, her moral teachings, and as it goes, as it differs more and more from the culture, you know, we got to fight that current, right? That's what we see in secularism. Yes, we talk a lot about what it means to be called to be a sign of contradiction and how that inspires us and invites us into this life of courage. And, you know, the, the way is never easy. And we, we draw on so many stories from, from the scriptures, from the lives of the saints, and from, um, from stories, from literature itself, too, about the call uh, to this great adventure that is the work of our life is is never going to be just an easy, simple thing. And um, it requires a lot of courage. It requires courage to, to stand by principles, as you say, especially if uh, we're kind of crossing a current um, of, of the dominant culture, for sure. Right. And you make the point of friendship, the importance of friendship. You know, if you would have told me and as a teenager, you know, it takes courage. I would have th thought of like Gary Cooper, High Noon, the town mm -hmm. abandons him. His wife does stick yeah. up for him, but the town yeah. abandons him. And I think that was the image of the hero. You have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to rely on yourself. Yeah. And that's, that's courage. That's what it takes. Certainly the, he had c courage, but as Christians, how do we see it? I think that, that, as you point out, one of the dominant themes that we draw on is this idea of friendship and not just a friendship of the people that we see every day, the people that we know and love here in this life, but also this idea of the communion of saints, which I think is such a beautiful way of tapping into to friendship. And the fact as well that, that God has called us his friends, that if we are walking with Christ, then we are his friends. And that is such a tremendous a blessing. I think if we pause and we really meditate upon that, what a, a, an amazing gift that is that God has offered us his friendship um, and will walk with us. Um, and so many times in the scriptures, we come across, you know, along with the command of, of have courage and be strong is also the command of like, don't fear because I am with you. And I think that that, that is really, um, you know, we're drawing on human friendships. Yes. We're drawing on, on the power of the communion of saints. Yes. But, but so fundamentally, we are relying on on the friendship of God as we walk this life, the, the road that, that we've been set on, yes. Right, I, Christianity proclaims the primacy of grace, that we can't, you know, have courage and have faith, you know, have faith in Jesus mm -hmm. that he's with us. That's a beautiful theme. And I know you, you talk about different saints. Is there one, one of the saints you like that really witnessed to courage for you? Yes, I was really um, drawn by the power of the story of Blessed Franz Jägerstatter. And um, we, we talk about him uh, in a couple of episodes, actually, in, in the series. Um, that he, he was a conscientious objector in World War II um, and had the courage to sort of stand by his conscience and stand by his faith, even with all of those around him failing to kind of understand why he would, he would run that risk. Um, refusing to, to serve in the Nazi regime at all, um, why he would do that, why he would risk imprisonment. And, and to me, that story was very powerful um, in that he relied very much on the reading that he had done, his encounters with, with the faith, his, his devotions, um, his attention to the liturgical seasons, all of these signs of the faith that, that kind of kept him going and, and gave him courage. Um, even as I say, when, when it seemed like he was standing alone, um, he was drawing on this tremendous wellspring of, of, of courage, right, uh, that comes to us from, from the inheritance of the faith that we have. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're speaking about a new mini-series on EWTN called The Quest with Dr. Shannon Valenzuela. Back in a moment.
Dr. Valenzuela, welcome back here to Life on the Rock. Um, I want to talk about uh, the role of, of being a witness for Christ. And in one of your guests you interview on the series, uh, she says, one of the professors at Dallas says, you know, to, we all have to make a choice. And even if we're just trying to pass, be passive, not make it, we're making a choice, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, she, she really highlights this idea that you really can't stand back from the fight, right? You, you There is this sense that um, we have a part to play. There is a battle that has been raging from the very beginning and that we all are in a position of needing to find a side, right? And there is no sideline in that you get to just kind of step back and not and not choose. Um, you either are are actively or passively fighting for something. And and I think that, that that's very motivating, I think, um, and very empowering that we we own that choice, you know, and we we are conscious of it and we make those choices very deliberately and, and with with prayer and with reflection. Um, that we we understand that that our choices are are very meaningful in, in that way. Right. And sometimes maybe a, a person watching this could just say, "Well, I'm not really called to anything dramatic or lofty." But maybe could you say something about you're you're a married uh, woman, you have children. Maybe some of the challenge there against marriage and the family that we face today. I think this is such a beautiful question. Thank you for asking this because yes, one of the one of the points that we make in the series is that you know we draw on these these stories of of heroes and you know we're talking about Frodo from the Lord of the Rings or we're talking about these historical figures who seem to have this you know grand calling, and one of the points that that we really hope that viewers take away from the series is that no matter how great or small you might feel your vocation is or your part to play. God has designed you for that purpose and no one else can do that work but you. And I think that's so profound, um, this idea that, you know, my living a vocation, my vocation as, as a wife and a mother, um, irrespective of anything else that I might do, requires so much courage on just a daily basis, you know, to, to give myself to that, those relationships um, and to live them well is, is an act of courage. And, and I think that it doesn't have to be, you know, even though we're using language, like I said, of, of quests, which, you know, make us think about knights and heroes and dragons and, you know, all of these grand things that that sometimes the, the most courageous and brave thing we do is to take the next step forward in our daily lives and our in our vocation and living it out with faithfulness. And and I think that that's that's something we really hope that that everyone takes away from the series. Right. Yeah. Just maybe to do the next right thing in front of us and yes. and. You know, we have to die to ourselves, maybe get out of our selfishness, you know, and, and live for others and do something for someone else. And what I like about this series is that it just it just feels like you you all it seems so Catholic because you're you're speaking from like a depth. There's a depth to it. When you start talking about suffering and darkness, it's like that comes like from experience, you know. It's um and did you want to say anything more about maybe like the dark nights, the obstacles that we have to face that, uh, what does that do for us and how does that affect us? So I, I, I think that this is really an important point as well, is that I think sometimes we, we think that we want the road to be, to be easy and we want to feel like one of the signs that we're on the right path is that the path is open and it's clear and it's easy and it's, and, and it's, you know, there's lots of light and it's, it's, you know, and we're successful it, and we're successful. <laughs> there are certain signs that we right. kind of associate maybe with, with being on the right track, you know, so we use that kind of language. And I think that once we start running into obstacles and they will come, they, they, that just part of one of, one of the things that we try to emphasize is that the obstacles are part of the journey. They are the journey. Um, it's how we handle those things that, that kind of define our, our character in so many ways um, that, that that's not necessarily a sign that we're on the wrong path. Um, it may be a sign that it is time for us to rely on God, for example. You know, it, it may be time for us to realize that our own strength isn't enough and that, that we need to reach out and, and rely more on, on divine providence, for, for example. Um, it may be a sign that, that we need to 
take a step back and re-examine our life. I mean, maybe we got into some difficulties because we were on the wrong path. It looked right, but it, it was actually not the right path for us to be on. So it's an invitation, I think, when you when you encounter an obstacle. I'll, I'll, I'll use a little bit of a personal story. So I did some obstacle course racing actually a few years ago. Uh, so I don't know if you've seen these things, but it's, you know, it's a whole course with, with obstacles and, and you, you know, you're, it's nine miles or whatever and 30 different obstacles that you have to climb over. And it's an exhausting and very grueling process. But one of the things that really came out of that experience for me was first of all, this idea that the obstacle is the journey. And also that those moments where you encounter an obstacle, you have an opportunity to make a choice. Are you going to go over that obstacle? You know, mm -hmm. are you going to rely on the friends that are with you to help you get over that obstacle? Because sometimes you need a hand up that wall that you can't get up on your, on, on your own. Um, are you going to, you know, always pray before you go up that obstacle? I think that there is that, that for me was a tremendous source of inspiration in thinking about how we handle, um, the obstacles that we encounter in our right. lives. Yeah. It seemed like we need a, a humility to, to trust, to rely on friends, to take direction and guidance. And it seemed like sometimes the fruits of the darkness is like we're growing in faith, hope, and charity that unites us with God to draw the strength from him. Ultimately, we were speaking about Lord of the Rings. I, I just love the fact that, you know, Frodo perseveres, goes up Mount Doom, but the only way the ring gets into the pool of lava is that if his finger was bitten off, right, by yeah. Gollum. Yes. I mean, Sam yes. helped him the whole way, it practically, and yet, in a, in a sense, he failed, but Providence <laughs> was guiding it. Grace was there in some mysterious way. And Yes, I think that's right. And that's a lesson seem like we all have to learn that it's it's not we you know we have to rely on God. We have to trust him. He gives us friends and he helps us along the way and and sometimes it just I think it comes to like this naked cleanse, you know clinging to him. Yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, exactly. And and I think the Gollum example is a great example because Frodo in some ways wishes that that obstacle were removed. You know, he right. he wishes that you know I wish that Bilbo had done something about this, you know, and and he needs to be reminded that we all have a part to play. Even the, those those people or those those things in our lives that seem like they are taking away from our purpose or that they are they are running us astray, um, somehow like that God can use those even those experiences. I think to to draw us closer to to Him if we're if we're open to allowing that. Okay. Yeah, I think you make great points in this uh, mini series. I think it'll bless people. Any uh, last point you want to make as we as we end the show? I just want to, I guess, thank all of the many faculty that we had here at the university who, who were willing to participate in this endeavor. Uh, one of the beautiful things that I, I love about this series is that we draw from so many disciplines across our curriculum and across our, our, our wonderful university here to, to sort of put this together. And I think that that's, it's just a testament, I think, to what the University of Dallas is a, is about in many ways that we we have these conversations across disciplines and we are all sort of united in this pursuit of of wisdom through the true and the good and the beautiful and 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 that's something that you know I'm I'm so grateful for for our faculty who were willing to participate and share their great love um, for their own subject and for for that pursuit um, as we put this this project together. Well, Dr. Valenzuela, thank you so much for joining us on Life on the Rock. Thank you so much, Father. Well, I was impressed from what I saw of this new miniseries, The Quest. Production values are really high. It looks great, great B-roll, great music. And I like what uh, Dr. Valenzuela said, that it's drawing from the University of Dallas professors, from literature, philosophy, theology, reflections, on this quest, mm -hmm. this journey that we're all on. And my favorite point tonight was she talked about, you know, how the story, the, this arc of the hero, you know, there's, there's weaknesses and challenges and he can't, he's not self-sufficient, right? We experience that when life gets real, yeah. you know, we, we discover our personal poverties and failings. We need help from others. We need grace. We need God most of yeah. all. And that's what makes the quest, the journey yeah. that we're all on, so fascinating. I think whenever you just look at the lives of the saints, when you look at St. Uh, Augustine in particular, of how many struggles he had, you know, and how, all that he had to overcome, but he emphasizes grace. 
Right. And that's what we have to have is grace. And we do have to rely even more on divine providence to intervene and to really kind of put us back on the straight and narrow, so to mm-hmm. speak, because we wander off all the time mm-hmm. very quickly. Then it seems like you know, we stray from that journey. You know, right. our quest, our ultimate right. goal is to get to heaven. But so often we get just derailed. <laughs> I think the greatest disservice we do to our young people and the culture is stripping life of yeah. its real drama of the real challenge of good and evil that's tearing at us. That are we gonna live a, a heroic life? It is possible to live a moral life, to seek God's will in everything. And that's gonna take sacrifice. Yeah. That's gonna take help from friends. She pointed out helps from the saints yeah. and their intercession. And the, just the, like you said, the primacy of grace yeah. and drawing strength from God. That's where real strength comes from, that's where God's providence is guiding us through this yeah. quest. I think too, just in today's culture, there's just a lot of times a false image of what a person is, you know, especially on the social media. You know, you see all kinds of distortions of what just being a human is, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we try to imitate or may think that's what I'm supposed to be, you know? But really, maybe the reality is God's over here calling you into a very different uh, just state in life or just where God wants you to be doing, maybe a certain time of work or charity. But God is gonna lead us, you know, not from a distorted image of what humanity is, but what true true human humanness is. And we find that in Christ, and we find that really in a life of grace. Right, he reveals who we're called to be, and how we're to give of ourselves. So we'll send you to that vineyard with these thoughts and reflections. May our Heavenly Father shine his face upon you. May he give you his peace, May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock.